Hi folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things. And a couple of books arrived in the mail a couple days ago that I've been looking forward to cracking open. Over 800 pages of prime grade A Legend of Zelda concept art. How the hell am I going to be able to decide what to make? Oh. Well, hello there. As always, I'll start with a chunk of wood, a bit of wire, and see what happens. A Lionel, as it turns out, is made up of three main sections. It's got the legs of a horse, the body of a former Californian governor, and the head of a humanoid lion. I've never made a horse, and I've never made a lion, and I've never made a Californian governor, so this was all a bit of a challenge for me to get the proportions correct. Fortunately, it's all the same business as far as building an armature and then adding clay onto it, so I'm just gonna start building things up and go from there. I know that I want the legs to be beefy and short rather than your usual long and lean horse legs because they're going to need to hold up a hilariously ill-proportioned Mr. Olympus. So once I've got the general shape of the legs figured out, I can start adding in the hooves. Now once I add the hooves in, I realize that that's, that's not how a horse leg works. However, fortunately I can just remove a section of the lower leg and rebuild it. I'll set the part I removed aside so that I can make some glue later. Then once I'm a bit happier with the shape of the legs, I'll turn to my good friend 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol, which I will use to smooth all the fingerprints and bumps out. Now there's not a great deal of detail on the legs themselves, but the hooves have some adorable little fluffy patches like you might see on a Clydesdale or some type of horse like that. I'm going to assume this means that the Lionels are half Clydesdale as well, which might be why they're a Lionel with a Y instead of a Lionel with an I. To make the fabric that wraps around the legs, I'm just going to cut grooves into it and then add a single piece on top to blend it all in. I tried making it out of the straps wrapped all the way around, but it looked a little bit awkward and the legs were a bit too thick. And then of course the last part will be adding his little anklet because they all have anklets for some reason. Now I did underestimate the size of the upper torso once I got into the legs, so I need to bulk it out a bit more with a bit more aluminium, and then I can start adding on to the clay. Building up muscle is a bit daunting at first since it's hard to know where to start, but I find the best way to go about it is by adding exaggerated blobs where the muscle ought to be and going from there. Obviously the more you know about anatomy the better, but there are a billion and one resources online that are perfect for figuring out where everything goes. And once I've got the general shape in place, I'll start blending all the edges until it's one solid piece. The muscles on the front of the torso were built up in the exact same way, with exaggerated blobs slowly getting blended together. You know you've done a good job when you start to feel self-conscious about your own body. Now the arms will get their own double strength wound wire since they're going to be holding up a decent amount of weight and the last thing I want is for them to collapse under the enormous muscles. Now his big muscular arms need to be ridiculously muscular, so naturally I'm using Arnie in his prime as my muse. And then again, big sections getting blended into smaller sections is the name of the game here. I've yet to meet an artist who likes making hands and I am no exception. Fortunately our Lionel has the big old clawed hopper hands so a couple of bratwurst squashed into place and blended in will work perfectly. The other hand though will be holding a sword so I'm going to sculpt the fingers around a piece of dowel which I can then recycle later for the hilt of the sword. Now his body at this point is a bit too waxy smooth so I'm going to give him a little bit of horse hair. The easiest way to do this is to take a little bit of bacon bond and apply it with a stiff bristled brush. Once it cures in the oven it will be barely noticeable but you will be able to see some small brush marks which are perfect for horse hair. Then I'm on to adding the adornments. First will be the tiny little chest piece in the front, which I made out of a strip of polymer clay and a tiny wound bit of armature wire. And then he needs his little belt in the front as well as a small shoulder thing on the side. Now before I get any further, I also need to give him his tail. First step is to drill a hole in his butt and then stick another piece of wire into it. Then once I've shaped it into the shape that I'm after, it's as simple as applying a little bit of clay onto that and then building up a couple different layers using some little wormy dealies. Then once it's all blended and textured, I can add some simple leather strips to separate the sections. 
finish off the rest of his adornment, a couple random pieces of rock or bone fragments get attached to his left arm, and then I can make the random groin protector that hangs down in the front, his heart protector, and the pauldron over his right arm. And then I'm on to making his noggin. Now, did you ever read Animorphs as a kid? If you didn't, they were people that could shapeshift into animals, and while the books themselves sucked, each one had hilarious cover art, like cripplingly bad. They all involved a person transforming into an animal over the course of five photos, and even in the early 90s, I knew it was Terra bad. But that's pretty much what I'm trying to channel with the Lionel's head. It's not quite a person, and it's not quite a lion. Instead, it's kind of like a stage three Animorph. Also, if you've ever wondered what a bald Lionel looks like, well, here you go. Now I'll give him a big thick neck because I need to lift his head up and forward, and I'm not gonna worry about blending it in because the mane's gonna cover it all up anyways. Then a quick symmetrical lobotomy and I can anchor some wire to attach his horns. These will get shaped and textured and then I'm onto his glorious mane. This will be comprised of a number of thick face sausages working their way around until I've got the bottom layer shaped and textured. I'll also be sure to include his adorable little beard knot before building the rest of his hair up in a series of spiky layers until I'm left with a glorious Goku mane. The only thing more ridiculously sized than a Lionel's body is its weapon. So to make sure the weight of the Honda-sized sword doesn't snap my poor horse legs, I'm gonna dip into the world of LARPing and build a fully foam sword. It's easy enough to shape and sharpen using a good sharp blade, and then a layer of primer in the future will make sure that it isn't too flimsy. I've also made a few more chinks of chain out of armature wire and loosely attached it so that I can paint it before attaching it to the Lionel. I'm also going to make a shield in much the same fashion using predominantly foam to keep the weight down. The concept art I'm using has the fancier, spikier sword and board, but I always preferred the more basic style armaments, so I'm going with that design instead. I assure you that these designs being much easier and quicker to make has no bearing on my decision to use them instead. Finally, we're on to our tiny Hylian hero, and with the Lionel finished, I figured Link would probably stand just under the 54mm scale. With that in mind, I will build him an armature and get his pose sorted out before bulking up the body with a thin layer of clay. As always, I like to get started on the head first so that I can work around those as my proportions. I'm still very much figuring out how to properly sculpt an anime style face since they're always pretty smooth and soft. My own face is very much a wrinkly mess of smile lines and baggy eyes and as a general rule you'll always be more comfortable sculpting what you know. Alas, Link is a handsome youthful 100 year old warrior with nary a scar and a complexion that the Kardashians would kill for so it's always a challenge for me despite how often I seem to make him. At any rate, once I've got that baby smooth face finished, I'll start working my way inward from his extremities, starting with the feet and the legs, then the hands and the arms. Much the same as I did for the Lionel, I'm gonna give Link a sword pommel to hold onto so that I can sculpt his closed fist first. The easiest way to do this is to attach a piece of armature wire to the base and then bend it into the position I want before adding the hand over top. At this point, I've given Link a full body bake and I'm ready to add his fancy outfit. The original design calls for his thin blue champion's tunic, so I started with that in mind. However, the last time I made a Breath of the Wild Link, I gave him this exact outfit and I didn't just want to make the same thing over again, so I'm going to take this opportunity to give him my favorite set in the game, the Hylian Armor. The only problem with this is that I had semi-committed to the champion's tunic and he's a bit thicker than I had originally planned. Whatever, we'll just say that he's post-meal Link and he's got a slight problem with salt retention. However, this time at least I remember to give him a Sheikah Slate, and beyond that, it's just a case of adding lots of belts, buckles, straps, and little pieces of armor. And then the finishing touches are to take our balding hero and give him a noodly toupee. More specifically, giving him his own flowing mane by way of wormy dealy squished and textured into the beautiful blonde locks synonymous with our silent protagonist. To make his sword, scabbard, and shield, I'll bake some small pieces of clay into roughly the shape I'm after. Then with just a touch of sanding, we've got his weapons ready. And with that, we're finally on to the painting. Now I'm gonna go with a golden Lionel for this project, and I kinda leaned a bit heavy onto the gold to start off with. However, I figured if it's a yellowish brown coat I'm after, then a bright yellow base coat is at least a good color to start with. Fortunately, my second coat was decidedly less vomit inducing. 
And then with that bottom base coat done, I'm ready to start painting all the Lionel Zebra lines. And yes, I said Zebra instead of Zebra, and no, I won't go back to Zebra, because Zebra just makes more sense. I tried to match the lines that you see on the Lionels in-game, but I can't say with 100% certainty that it's a direct one-to-one -one match. I can, however, say with 100% certainty that it is not a one-to-one -one match, so at least that's something. I gave his hair a nice base coat of off-white, actually I think it's bone white, and I made sure to get all the various tufts of fur on his arms, as well as his tail the same color. Then a heavy dry brushing of white over the tips add a tiny bit of Maybelline shine to the entire thing. The various straps on his body, tail, and his beard will get painted with a dark leathery brown, and then the various pieces of armor will get covered in a warm gray. Then it's on to adding highlights to all the pieces. I'll do this by adding a little bit of color to all the edges before dry brushing a brighter color over top. This step is really important for helping the sections look a little bit more natural, and by using a slightly larger brush it helps to maintain that cell shaded style one might recognize from the Breath of the Wild. His eyes got painted with a dark blue and then I added a little bit of lighter blue around the edges to try and simulate the spooky glow from the concept art. Finally it's on to adding the black wash over the top of the rivets, the buckles, and into all the nooks and crannies. Then once that has dried I'll go over everything with a final dry brushing of an almost white off white. And this will really highlight all those edges and make everything stand out that tiny bit more. Finally his sword and shield get basically the same treatment and we're on to Link. Link will undergo very much the same process as the Lionel, only on a smaller and inversely frustrating scale. However, while I paint our Elfine hero in the background, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, you. More specifically, I want to thank my newest patrons, Golwar, J. Kyle Fagan, Sarah Forbes, Miss to See, Boodle Oodlin, Courtney West, Dio Dawkins, Michael Perillo, Lawrence Girard, Marilise, and Athena Wood. While these nerdy things I make are indeed tiny, the time and effort it takes to make them every week is anything but, and it simply wouldn't be possible without your support. So if you like these videos and you want to see me make more of these silly little things, consider subscribing, liking this video, commenting, and sharing. Of course, if you want to go above and beyond and help feed me while I make these things, then you can head on over to my Patreon page, the link is in the description below. However, this Link is still here, and you may be asking yourself, why is this Link blue if he's wearing the Hylian armor? Well, I really like the blue in the Breath of the Wild versus the standard Link green, so I decided to keep that color going. Besides, you can always dye the arm in the game, and you pretty much end up here anyways. But at this point, we have attached the blade to the hilt, equipped our hero with a shield, and slapped his scabbard onto his back, so our Link is finished. Which is the only thing left to do is build the base. Now I did want our ill-fated foes to be meeting in a grassy field, but a grassy field's a little bit boring, so I'm gonna really spice things up by adding some rocks. Nothing screams, I like to live life on the edge, quite like geology, am I right? So I'll hack and chop some foam into vaguely rocky shapes, and then glue them haphazardly onto my pizza base. Now even though I'm gonna be covering the entire base in grass, it's a tad bit too flat. And I wanna give it a little bit of variation, so much like me in an awkward situation, it's getting plastered. Once the plaster is dried, I'll prime the foam gray before giving it a bit of color by way of washes. I'll start with a black wash before working my way through gray, and then brown before finally adding a little bit of ochre. When that is dried, I'll tickle the tips with a light dusting of light gray and white. Then the entire base gets painted over with a dirty dirt brown, and I'm ready to get this flocking show on the road. I'm going to add the grass in a few layers, starting with a very thick carpet of 3mm. This will act as the base, and if I apply it on thick enough, you shouldn't really be able to see the brown underneath at all. I'll follow the 3 mil with a bright 6 mil, then use my fingers to scrunch it up a little bit. This will give it a bit more of a realistic look and prevent the grass from looking too uniform. Then another layer of 6 mil before adding some final highlights with a much lighter 3 mil. I've intentionally left a few spots beside the rock uncovered so that I can add a little bit of dirt and debris. I'll fill this section in with a little bit of fine grain sand and then some slightly larger grit before adding some tiny rocks and a bit of green foam. A final spritz of isopropyl alcohol and a few gallons of thinned out scenic cement will hold it all in place. Then the only thing left to do is add our pieces onto the base and we're set.
And there you have it, folks. I hope you had a good time. I know I sure did. These are some pretty beefy books, and I'm willing to bet that there may be one or two more things that I could make out of them. So if you liked the video, let me know in the comments below. Maybe subscribe if you like this kind of stuff, and otherwise, we'll uh, see you next week. Cheers. Cheers.